Hi guys, Gleeter here. Today I'm going to show you a little demo I put together last night, a while back, and this is mostly for developers, but I'm going to show a little bit of something that might interest uh, regular players as well. But a while back we used something called GladLive. The idea was it was generic services for MMOs. Now we use something called Halo Live, which is significantly easier to use, easier to read, and it's a uh, better documentation. It, it's written by me. And so we've been transitioning to that, as well as phasing out GladNet for non-real-time stuff. So a lot of it's going to be using a new library, which all this stuff's going to have a dedicated video. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it later this week, once the actual once I can get some of the client code up on GitHub to show what a significant difference this is. It's going to allow regular c -sharp developers as well as ASP.NET developers and even web developers to come in, understand, and contribute to the project in meaningful ways. While in the past, everything was just... It, it was really becoming a mess, and the requirement to have to learn GladNet to really do anything was holding back con contribution. And I've also moved in everything in the title screen. All the animations are now done with Timeline, which is really great. It's the same thing that the cinematic is done in. It's I've been able to consolidate a lot of stuff. If anyone had gone into this title screen before, they wouldn't have really understood what was going on. It was all over the place, really. Now it's really all, all pretty much in one spot. It's very easy to understand and extend. R right now I wanted to show you just a quick thing about Halo Live, which is now, it is a part of the PSL project. It just happens to have the name Halo in it as well. So we're just going to start this up right away. And this is just for test purposes, so obviously it's not supposed to be here. You'll see that the, or something just popped up here. And what that was is, behind the scenes, we actually requested an endpoint. So this is like our DNS service for our game in our backend. Anytime you need to know the location of a service, you ask this service. So it's like the only static endpoint, or the only endpoint that has to be static. So... So this service has actually sent down the location. I know this is probably as interesting to most people, especially since we've had an authentication video before. And in fact, we've had much further than this, but this is a transition to something significant, I think. It's going to make a big difference for the project because the code is just so much simpler. As well as we've, we've been able to transition to async. Thanks to the new Unity, we can start utilizing tasks more easily and I've been prototyping some stuff to do asynchronous Unity stuff. And so, what happens is... Typed in my password wrong. Okay. What happens is all this stuff happens asynchronously and in the background. So you saw this, nothing like this, the screen didn't lag or anything. That's the significant part. I think this password's right. And you see that a request got sent up here, and we got a response. There was no, there was no stutter. Just fades smoothly. And yeah, so that's just a demo. I guess I could hop into the, some of the code real quick. It's not really ready. It's just, uh... Here's where we register the service. This is this is how you communicate with the authentication service. You actually use this interface and it has a single method. This is how you prepare it. Not only is it... Uh, you can ignore that part. That's going to get removed. And so this is just registering it. Uh, this is a hack that has to be done for because of the certificate we're using. And then we go into the client. Now it's not documented, so bear with me. And we just try to authenticate, and then we, with this thing I've been prototyping a little bit, 
right now is an extension method called Unity Async. And, uh, well, that's what we do once it's like a continuation um, of the task, I guess. But it's not the way that it works, is it utilizes the coroutines in Unity, and we, we continue once it's completed. And so, yeah, so that's basically how we do it. And th this is all it is. This is this is all the code. It's very simple. Just when you come down to it, the client itself, the thing that someone might have to read and use, it's just a couple lines of code. Uh, this, this just contains the details for the stuff. This just tries to find those details in the scene and registers it as that service. It's very simple, just a few lines of code. Before, it was much more difficult to understand and grasp, I think, for a lot of people. But now that all you have to do is call some methods on this, and you don't even know what's going over the network, you just know it provides a task or a future, uh, I think that's a significant difference. I think it's going to... Once you start to see how, how gutted the library or the project looks, uh, code-wise, and how it does the same amount of work, I think people are gonna people are gonna like it. I think, but yeah, I'm I'm just rambling at this point. It's 8:30. I haven't slept. I was up all night working on some issues with certificates, and I won't get into that. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'm sorry it wasn't too interesting. Sorry, this is the sort of stuff we've seen before. But we're in a transitionary period, and I hope to get out of that period soon. Thanks for watching.